This is the Samsung Galaxy A17 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Taking a look at the micro SD and SIM tray, we can see a yellow rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the plastic backplate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't have to take apart the phone to replace that. There are now 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. So looking at the back housing, it's also made of plastic. We can see antenna flex cables, as well as the NFC antenna. Taking a look at the other side, we see additional antenna flex cables around the border, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. Once the back housing has been removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as connects the screen cable to the main board. So if you needed to replace the screen, at this point you disconnect the battery cable and this cable which connects the screen cable to the main board, you'd carefully pry off the screen cable from the subboard, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off. Apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. The blue coaxial cable which is connected to the subboard as well as the main board can be disconnected by just popping it off. There is a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. This is the 5000 mAh battery. There are two additional Phillips screws which need to be removed, one holding down the main board and the other holding down the subboard. Looking at the main board, we see the 5 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. The flex cables for the cameras can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the other side, we see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, the front ambient light sensor, the SIM and micro SD reader, as well as a the thermal heat transfer tape on the back shield. Once that's peeled off, 
we see thermal paste on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Taking a look at the subboard, we see a rubber gasket around the charger port and the primary microphones located here. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner which is held down with some adhesive as well as the bottom speaker assembly. If you needed to replace either of those just apply some heat and gently pry them off. This is the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. To replace that just gently peel off the flex cable. And this is the top earpiece speaker which is also held down with some adhesive. There are two liquid damage indicator stickers. One is located here on the frame underneath the sim reader and another one over here underneath the subboard. There is also a thermal pad on the frame which is seated underneath the processor, which again helps to transfer heat away from the processor. Now when it comes to this phone, if you were to accidentally insert a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you wouldn't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the hole, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.